So you walk through on Coleman. So in the back, you got a backup camera that's pre-wired for one, it doesn't have one. Very simple to have them install one if you choose to. It does use power off those marker lights up there. So you gotta turn the running lights on your tow vehicle, which turns the marker lights on. And then that'll turn the camera on if you were to get a camera installed. Cover caps here come off. That's gonna be the perfect spot to store your sewer hose. It does not come with a sewer hose, it's something you have to purchase separately. Cable inlet. So if you're going somewhere that provides cable, you could hook it up through here. Not a lot of places still do, but occasionally you go somewhere that provides cable. Water eat water heater. All very simple to use. So the first thing you have to do is put your drain plug in the hole over here. 15 16 is the socket size for that. They also make a tool you can purchase for it. I don't like using it because it's more like a box with a wrench and you it's just it's hard to use. I buy I'd recommend getting a 15 16 socket, like a short one, with an extension and a ratcheting wrench. Something you could pick up a harbor harbor freight cheap and you just leave to, with your camper to use just for this. So you put your plug in there and get it started by hand. It is plastic so you don't want to cross thread it. And snug it down with your wrench. Now as soon as you hook up water, whether it be from city or you turn your pump on because you're pulling from your fresh tank, it's going to fill up. Once it's filled up, then you can turn it on. This one is gas only. Because um, you don't have to... Alright, sorry for the interruption. Go back to the water heater. It's all on the switch. You don't have to light a manual light a pilot or anything like that. The burner will cycle on and off as the water you know, reaches its temperature and then as you start using more water. Definitely recommend draining it after every trip. You don't want water sitting in here for a while. It'll start to become stagnant. So before you pull all your plug out to drain it, that plug right there, you want to shut off all sources of water. So if you're running your pump, turn it off. If you're hooked up to city, turn the water off at the faucet. Oh yeah, before you pull your plug, crack this open, leave it open, water is going to squirt out, that's fine, everything out here is sealed, it's designed to get wet, once water stops squirting out, snap it closed, then you can pull your plug out. If you neglect to do this first, you're going to get a bath. And then, I just recommend cleaning in here, often make sure this isn't clogged up or anything, make sure this is all clogged up, and then... You can use compressed air. Just keep in mind, whatever you blow in through here, it's going to come out here, so just be careful. Fresh water fill. This is where you will fill your onboard fresh tank. Just rest your hose in there. Don't jam it in there. And monitor its progress on the monitoring panel on the inside. Don't wait until you hear water squirt out everywhere to say that you're full. And then just like your water heater, I recommend draining that after every trip so it doesn't get stagnant either. Either Your drain for that is, you can see, right there. When you are pulling water from your fresh tank, that's when you need to use your pump. When you're hooked up to city and you have a hose hooked up to here, you won't need to use your pump or anything like that. Access to your back of your fridge for any maintenance, cleaning and whatnot. Just make sure you stay clean here and here and here. I recommend taking this whole panel off and cleaning back there every once in a while as well. Outdoor shower. With hot and cold out here, you'll be taking many showers out here, but Rinsing your feet off or spraying down the pets that got dirty. It's perfect for that. Right below that. If you dump area, so you have your two valves here. Always make sure these are all the way closed before you take your cap off. And when you're ready to dump, take your cap off. Put your, put, clip your hose onto that. I recommend doing your black tank first. Your black is your toilet water. Your gray is everything else. Dump your black, let that get completely dumped. And then dump your gray tank. That'll flush out your sewer hose. That way when you pick it up to move it into your bumper for storage, it's not dripping in black tank water. 
I still rec would definitely recommend wearing gloves though. Over here, pass through storage, you got a crank over there, that, that little silver crank. That's a manual backup for your tongue jack. Here's good information. You have your unloaded vehicle weight, so the dry weight of the trailer right now is 4,368 pounds. Cargo carrying capacity is 3,192 pounds. Water it counts as cargo. And then my one I like people to know the most is tire pressure at 65 PSI. That's what they're checked to at now. But before you go on any major trips, I definitely recommend checking your tire pressure. Dual 20 pound cylinders, freshly filled, so that's something you don't have to worry about. And your automatic change over regulator here. So you can see this is pointing this way. It's gonna pull from this tank first. But if you were to have both tanks on, and this one would get emptied, this little diaphragm in here will open up, you won't see it happen. It'll switch to this tank automatically if this one were to be on. However, when it switches over, this, this selector does not move. Does not indi indicate in any way, shape, or form that it has switched tanks. So keep that in mind. Battery, it's a Group 24, that's the size of the battery. RV marine grade battery, so like an exterior use battery. I recommend taking it out in the winter, storing it garage, basement shed, in your house even. Anything's a lot better than being sat out all winter. And if it's going to be a, quite a while between trips, like a month, you don't want it sitting with your battery if you have it if you have it stored somewhere where you can't plug it in because it does charge when you're plugged in. I recommend disconnecting the negative lead if that were the case. Power tongue jack with a light. Beats hand cranking every day of the week. Do you have access to the, the spot to use your manual backup? Chains, you're going to cross them. When you're hooked up to your truck, that'll create a cradle to catch it. Breakaway that gets hooked up to your truck as well. Get you a nice carabiner, something heavy duty to clip it onto your truck. And then your seven way right here, that also gets hooked to the truck. This is what's gonna allow your trailer lights and brakes to work. If your truck or tow vehicle does not have a brake controller, your brakes on this camper will not work. And we can't let you leave with the trailer without working brakes. Over here, pre-wired for solar, so it doesn't have the solar, it's just pre-wired for it. All that does will trickle charge your battery. So you can plug the panel in there, set it maybe like on your tanks or something, somewhere in the sun, and just keep the battery maintained. And here is that crank for the backup for the tongue jack. You have these stabilizers right here. And I'll keep in mind, I said stabilizers, these are not levelers. They're not meant to handle picking up the weight of a trailer just to stabilize it. So if the ground is a little uneven, don't worry because one will touch and then the other one will keep going and then boom. That's all you want. You don't want to over pick it up. So if you trip the breaker that's in there, there is a self-resetting breaker that can get tripped. If you were to overextend them or over retract them, that's going to save them from getting damaged. However, if the breaker were to fail or it didn't react in time, you could bend the jacks. So just keep in mind, they're not levelers, they're stabilizers. If you want your trailer to be level, for front and back, you're going to use your tongue jack to raise and lower the front, get it level front to back. If you're really worried about side by side, as you back it into the spot, back it in under some blocks on the low side to get it level side to side. Outdoor power, GFCI protected. All your GFCIs are on the same circuit, so if one will trip, they're all trip. Furnace, just keep it clean. Um, if you see anything in there, pull it out, clean it out. Don't use compressed air, because you'll just blow whatever's in there further in there. I do make a screen for this. It clips on with a spring, and then it hold, pulls the screen to that. That's going to help prevent anything from getting in there, bugs, insects. The big problem I ever I always see is spider webs and then bees nests in there. So if you see a bees nest, just pick it out so it doesn't block any airflow. Up here, this is your vent for your range hood for the fan. So you want to make sure it's open when you're running the fan so it actually has somewhere to go. 
um, when you're traveling I always like to close it so it doesn't it's not flopping around everywhere and uh, overnight I close mine too so no bugs can get in then here is access to that rear stabilizer deck works the same way as the front one again do not try to use it to pick up the weight of the trailer all right onto these steps they are adjustable you have pins right here you can see that this this pin right here so you can raise and lower the legs so if the surface is on, if your surface you're putting them down is uneven you can make sure the steps are even in good contact now you want this see how this right here you want this to still be tight with the sill of the door because if this ends up sitting too high like like that and you try to close your door it won't close and you might end up bending some of this stuff down here so make sure your steps sit flat and even now, i'm gonna come to the inside first thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna turn the air conditioning off we'll get to that in a little bit just so we can you can hear so you have your monitoring panel here you can read battery charge battery charge will always read charged when it's all the way full when the uh, sorry when the camper is plugged in uh, if the camera is plugged in, it's always going to read that full charge. That's because it doesn't read the voltage off the battery. It reads it off the 12 volt lines, and the 12 volt lines will always have um, voltage when the camper is plugged in. Read how full your fresh tank is. We'll have to make sure we drain that. We just fill them up so we can test to make sure they read on the panel and that the pump works and is pumping from the tank correctly. So before you leave, we'll dump that. If you black tank, how full your black tank is. Remember, your black is your toilet water. So this. And then gray one. Gray one is going to be like your kitchen sink and your bathroom sink and whatnot. This does not have a second gray tank. They just use the same panel throughout all the different models. Um, so you can see there's no electric, there's no slide out switches here or anything like that. So you do not have a second gray tank. Controls for your awning extend and retract. So. You won't be able to go all the way open because of the scaffolding over there, actually. You know what, let's, we'll move this so you guys can get a good view of it open. There we go. It does not stop automatically. You have to let off the switch and it's not a one hit of the switch deal. It's hit and hold, so. When you see that flap hang out and that white sticker and the, the bare tube, you're all the way open. It is adjustable. You can see when it says pull down to adjust pitch, this can be this large part right here. Grab it, pull it down. You can lower when out of the awning to pitch it. So if it's raining, you can have water run off to the corner. Or you can pitch them both. So you can lower it if the sun's rising in your face, trying to block it. Now, you can have it open when it's drizzling and getting a little bit of light rain. But if you're getting heavy rain, heavy gusts of wind, pull your awning in. It won't do it for you. You have to be vigilant and come in and retract your awning. Don't worry about it. If you had it adjusted, you can see that's slightly adjusted. It's going to self-correct. That's what I like about this style of awning arms. You don't have to fumble with repositioning them back in the original position before you close your awning. Like some of the awnings do. So this one's not... If you roll it in wet because it's raining, as soon as you get the chance to, roll it back out, let the sun dry it off. Um, or else it's going to retain all that moisture and then get real smelly next time you open it. Controls for your water heater. So this is water heater on gas. Um, it's gas only. Remember, when you have it on gas, the burner will cycle on and off. Water pump. So if you're all pulling water from that onboard fresh tank, you turn your pump on. Exterior lights right here does LED lights on your awning. Interior lights do your main interior lights. Bedroom. Outlet and USB ports on either side. The lights in the bedroom, you have to click on and off on the light fixture themselves. It's a little button in the middle, you can use that. Same with the one above the bed. And then you do have, we'll make sure this storage up underneath your bed. Over here, there is 
your thermostat for your furnace. So this is your on off switch so you can see kind of how it says off and it's pointing this direction so all you do is clip it over and then you use this to change your temperature. Very simple. Right below that is the carbon monoxide and propane gas alarm. That is hardwired to the 12 volt system so there's no batteries you have to worry about changing. However, if that main battery up front were to start to die, that will give you low voltage charts. And right above the entry is a smoke alarm that uses stator 9 volt battery. So if that starts to die, um, you just throw a new 9 volt in it. Coming into the bathroom. Complimentary tank bowl cleaner. Well, not bowl cleaner, but fit to pour down in your black tank to keep, keep it from smelling. Your toilet is very simple to use. There's a pedal under here. As long as you're pushing it, it's going to continue to flush. Shower, very easy. Turn on the, the knobs, lift this up, diverts it to your shower, otherwise you're going to take a bath, you have to have it for a bath. Do have a fan in here to crank up lid. Definitely recommend using that when you're taking a shower. And then over here, this is your main GFCI. This is the GFCI you're going to hit reset on if any of the other GFCIs were to get tripped. Like this one over here, and then there might be another one, some, that one over there, those are all GFCIs. Microwave, very simple, works like your standard household microwave is not plugged in, camper. if the camera's not plugged in, microwave won't work. Light, and then a fan, remember if you're going to run that fan, make sure you have that vent on the outside open. Cooktop, super simple, you turn these for your burner, for your um, top stove, turn that to flame, twist your sparker, the light right up. Now the gas is off now so they won't light. But all three of these top burners work exactly the same. Your oven's a little different. You turn that to the flame, push and hold this in. As you're pushing and holding it in, you're going to want to twist your sparker. And you're going to keep twisting it until you see that pilot back in there get lit. Once it's lit, you, you can turn it to your desired temperature. If you turn it off to the flame, it shuts the burners off. It leaves the pilot on. That way, next time you cook, you don't have to relight the pilot. You just turn it on again. Definitely recommend turning it completely off before you go to bed or before you leave your camper unattended because you don't want to leave that pilot lit unattended. Light switch here up will do the knobs, middle turns it off, and then down does the knobs and is your oven light. Radio is very simple to use. Power here, volume. Change the channels here. You can yeah. change your band and whatnot. If you tap power, it's choosing between different modes. So auxiliary, Bluetooth, back to the radio because there is an auxiliary port. USB does not interface with the radio. It just is for uh, charging your phones and whatnot. And then you have presets down there. One through six, push and hold to save preset. Spot to mount a TV. So it, where the sticker is, there's going to be a mounting bracket built into the wall. Um, if you, not a bracket, but like more like a backer for, so it has some meat to hit. Feel around, you can feel it's a little soft here. Right here is nice and sturdy. That's where you'd want to mount a TV. Um, if you buy like a mount at like Walmart or here, take the screws that come with it and just throw them away because they're made for two by six walls. And the well, two by four walls rather. And these walls are definitely not two by four. So they're gonna be too long and end up poking a hole through the outside of the camper and that's no good. Right up here. So you have two switches. One of them is labeled Wi-Fi power. That is not used. This is pre-wired for Wi-Fi. It doesn't have the Wi-Fi. It's just pre-wired for it. Um, that you have to, but there's a fixture that gets installed on the roof and then you have to use this, put a SIM card in it. It's basically like paying another phone line just to have uh, internet. Antenna power. So that's your booster for your antenna. So if you're using the antenna, just make sure this is on. If you're hooked to that exterior cable, like I was showing you before, turn that off. Um, this does have an antenna, it's built in onto the roof, there's no cranking, there's no knobs for adjusting or anything like that, it's just a fixed digital antenna. Table over here, it turns into a bed as well. Lift it up, pop them legs out, table's going to rest on these bumpers, and then just reorganize these cushions to fill in the area. Over here, same thing, first, cup holders, and then this turns into a bed, lift up, pull out towards you. Nice flat for a bed. And then your fridge, very simple to use. That's off, that's on. 
its only mode is automatic. So when it's on, it's going to default to 110. So it's plugged in. If the camper's plugged in, that's what it's going to use. If you were to lose power somehow, someone tripped over the cord, can't find lose power, it's going to automatically switch to running off of propane for you, provided your propane to be on. Now, whether you're running on gas or electric, this fridge is going to take 8 to 10 hours to get to operating temperature. Uh, so keep that in mind. Try to plan your trip accordingly that way. Don't think as soon as you get to the campground and plug your camper in, you're good to store food in. Because it's not. It's going to take a little while for that to, to get cold. Then right below that, you break your box. All your breakers for your 120 volt appliances. And then all your fuses for your 12 volt. So you have a couple 15s and then 240s. I recommend um, carrying some spare fuses with you just in case. All right. All right, and then one more thing. This is the most important thing in the summers. It's your AC. So it has option. This says optional heat. Does not have that option. That's uh, gets added to it if you wanted to. Um, black is just going to run the fan. Blue will actually turn the AC portion of it on. Red doesn't mean it's it's heat. Remember, it just means it's the warmest the AC will get, and then this will be the coldest the AC will get. Get a little damper here. If you open it up, all the air is going to come out here. If you close it, it'll get distributed out the side vents, which you can open and close to distribute air where you want. And then when you're ready, just turn it off and you're done. All right. That concludes your video walkthrough of your Coleman. I hope you folks found the video informative. Hope you folks enjoy using this trailer a lot. I like these Coleman's a lot, so I hope you do too. And goodbye.